we had gone up to Bremerhaven to invite, we had been invited by Colonel Nielsen to go up to Bremerhaven and drive back through Holland and Belgium and get back into Germany. And uh, when we got to the German border, there was something wrong with my, I hadn't had a visa stamp or something. And the German authorities weren't going to let me into Germany. And of course, Richard, Richard understood because he knew German what they were saying. Colonel Nielsen didn't, but Richard understood. And so when he told Colonel Nielsen what was happening, why he pulled rank and he said, she is going back. And they just kind of backed off and let me in. But it was a, a kind of an interesting experience being eight, 19 years old and being stranded in, on the borders of the German border and not separated from my husband. I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> But anyway, it was, we had a, some, some good memories of our time in Germany. We later went back when our son went to Czechoslovakia on a mission uh, and we surprised him. We didn't tell him he, we were coming and we picked him up in Prague and then we toured his mission for a short while and then we came back and went through the area in Germany where we lived and we, we tried to find where we lived. Richard said, well, do you think we can, you can find Ringstrasse? We lived on Ringstrasse. And I said, of course I can. I said, I'll just, all I have to do is find the Schloss, which is the castle. There's a, quite a large castle in Schwetzingen. And I said, all you do is go north. Well, we got there and what had happened in the 50 years since we'd lived there, 50, 60 years, was they had brought in a railroad and the railroad went right through the house where we had lived, so it wasn't there anymore. <laughs> I, I was very frustrated that I couldn't find our house. <laughs> but, and then we couldn't find the barracks. We looked all over for Tompkins. It was Tompkins Barracks. So we went and decided we'd stay there that night and, and got a motel. And it wasn't where he signed up for the motel. They had to take us to the place. Well, they, when they took us to the place where we had signed up for this motel, it was right across the street from the barracks. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> but we, we've got some good, good memories. That's what's important in life, is that you create good memories and uh, put the bad memories in the background. Just remember the good. Loretta, could you tell us, you know, anything you want to tell us about raising your children or um, just, you know, if that was something about you? Well, we've had a lot of struggles in our 68 marriages, years of marriage, but I think probably the hardest it's hard right now for Richard to be in a v the VA center and not being able to see him for over a year or close to a year. But the hardest thing that we've been through in our life was when we nearly lost our daughter with cancer. She was about six months old. And uh, Richard had gone to Chicago to a business meeting and he was out of town. And I'd taken her for his, her uh, checkup with the doctor. We had missed the year, the month before. And when we got, to, when I got there, I, he must have seen what I saw, but I didn't know what it was. And it was, she had a tumor in her eye, and the light was reflecting off of this tumor. And so he took more detail and looked into it. And then he said, "Well, I suspect this, but I want you to get to a." specialist. And so I called Richard and that night Richard came in from Chicago and and then we had to take her to the hospital and on Sunday night and I stayed the night with her. And the next morning they confirmed that she had this uh, retinoblastoma. And we had to decide almost instantly whether we would try to treat it through radiation or we would have her eye removed. And that was a, that was a hard decision. And the fact that we were 
in the process of moving to Phoenix, Richard was, had been promoted to a managerial position in Phoenix with the company. Why uh, we decided that, that we would have the operation in Phoenix. And, but we, so we had to make a split second decision. This was on Monday that we found out. On Tuesday, Reed flew up. He had a, pr a private uh, a license. He flew up with Mother Nixon to, to Boise, and he, we boarded the plane, and he flew us to Phoenix, and I never returned. The, the, Richard was bishop at the time of the, at the Boise uh, 16th Ward, and the ward came in and took care of everything as far as moving and packing up, and just, they were wonderful. But, but, um, on Wednesday, her eye was removed, and I, I, that was that was a that was a hard one. But she's now almost close to sixty and has fifteen grandchildren, and I, I don't know how many great grand. Uh, yeah, she has not fifteen grandchildren. She has, I think, eleven or twelve grandchildren now, and uh, and she's. Been a wonderful daughter. The Lord saw fit for me to, for us to keep her on earth. So we're, that was one huge blessing. It was a hard time, but we've been blessed. Extremely blessed. Thank you. Why don't you say something about each of your children, just because they're, they're the ones that are going to be watching this, you know? And just tell us just something about their character. Well, our 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 first son was Stephen, and uh, we feel that was a blessing in 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 itself, because we had tried to adopt through the Release Society here in Utah, and they gave us a time span of five to ten years waiting period, and then Richard, this is how the Lord moves in our lives. So he was transferred to Boise, and we went through the process in Boise and they told us that we would know within a year whether we would have a, have a child. And so when we were to go back, this was in, in December, we put in, uh, first of December we put in our application and we were to go back in January to, do, to find out whether they'd even consider our application. And if they accepted us, we would have a child within a year. And so when we went back, in January, to find out whether we were going to be accepted or not, they said, we have a boy for you, a baby boy. And uh, so that was a, a, a true blessing, and we brought him home, and he's been uh, a wonderful son. He, he now is, um, well, <laughs> he hasn't been as easy to raise as some of our daughters. <laughs> But in, in respect that he had his mindset on going to Hollywood and being a rock star. And we tried everything we could do to persuade him differently. We finally persuaded him that he was to go on a mission. And he came back and, and he, still, he still has this musical talent that, that he uses here in, when, in Texas. He has a a band or something that I don't know the whole thing, but he plays drums and uh, never had any lessons at all, but he plays drums. But uh, he went on to get his master's degree in social work. So he's a very special spirit because not everyone could do that kind of work. His, his first job was to work with hemophiliac young people. And the, the ones he worked with are now dead because of the bad, the bad blood that was in, uh, in the bed that they had to be injected with back then. And, but now he's work, he works with alcoholics and drug people in, in a drug facility and he, he, he has helped a lot of people. So we're very proud of, of Stephen and his family. And then our next daughter was, was Christine, and she's special. 
she uh, went on to uh, get her teaching degree and uh, has taught school and she she teaches now in in Phoenix and her she married an attorney and they have four wonderful children who are she just became a grandma last well, I think last November and so she's excited about that and she has two more of her children that are expecting and then Catherine is the girl that that uh, had the blastoma with and then our next daughter, our next child was Carol. And Carol is very special. She she graduated in uh, she graduated in uh, public relations. But fortunately, Richard ha worked out of our home, and and he. All of our children worked for him in the business, and he taught him the business. So he he was she Carol knew how to do accounting, type thing, and so when things got so such in her family where she had to go back to work, why she wasn't able to go back into into the public relations, but she has done accounting, and she's now uh, helping to sustain her family in in this type of work and she's very very smart very talented and and she has six children uh, one has been on a mission is, is and he came home early because of COVID from Australia and then she has one da a daughter that's married with a with a grandchild and then our youngest is James who uh, he retired from the Marine Corps. Uh, he flew. Uh, he flew C-130s in the Marine Corps for 20 years. Uh, well, probably not the whole 20 years, but. And then, uh, but one time he said the hardest thing I had to do, Mother, when he was in Iraq, no Afghanistan, was to bring back the dead. It was a hard assignment for him, and uh, but then he retired and he's now living in Linden and and is an uh, airline pilot for United Airlines. And he has f four children, and their daughter, their oldest daughter, is getting married this February. So, I'm blessed to have one of my children t 20 minutes away. So. Okay, you're welcome to tell whatever. Um, could you just tell us um, something about you? Um, and and also, I want you to tell me, you know, your favorite things about Ridge Life. If you had to sum him up in a few words, like characteristics, you know, honesty. I mean, uh, uh, I'm describing Richard, you mean? Why don't we do that first, and then you can tell some things about you. Okay. Like what? What made him a good? I know he was a good mission president because one of my boys in my ward was one of his missionaries. Oh, is that right? Who was yes, that? Ryan Wright. Oh, is Ryan, Ryan in Wright. your uh, in well, your ward? He grew up in our ward. He, he's moved now yeah. because he's married. But his father was a chiropractor. Yes. Yes. And so. Anyway, I know he was a good mission president yeah, Ryan. through Ryan, and I and I'm I'm sure he was. But I want you to you to tell me about the characteristics of Richard. Well, I think what I fell why I fell in love with Richard is was his dedication to the Lord. And his his willingness to serve. And his faithfulness and his testimony. And. Uh, his honesty and integrity, and he he was a wonderful father, and is a wonderful father. We fortunately he was able to to run his business out of our home, so when he was state president, why it wasn't like the children were distanced from him because he was there available for them, at almost well not twenty four hours a day, but at least during the day when he was there working. So that that was a big bonus, 
and um, and I think that one of the gr greatest things about Richard is um, his great love for me. He he had as his motto to make me the make me the very best person I could be. And he supported me in all of my efforts in genealogy and and the other things which I took on in life. And uh, there's a lot of men that wouldn't do that. So I'm very grateful for for that attribute that he has. And uh, and I'm very grateful for the interest I've had in your family history because it has built my testimony. I've had so many things come to me through the Spirit to help me in this work that I can't deny the church. I know that it's true. I know that God lives and I know that Jesus is the Christ. I know that he's there for us, willing to help us if we just live such to receive the revelation. And uh, I'm grateful for our f relatives like you, Annette, that keep things going. Thank you.